Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Old Rear View Reader. Hey, Omar. Like your shirt? Thank you so much. My daughter picked it out, and she is a fan of Kirby. Uh, <laughs> yes, we are. What are we doing today? What, what is this Old Reader, New Reader that I'm only on once a month when I can make it? What is this? <laughs> so uh, today, uh, for Old Reader, New Reader, uh, where one of us is the Old Reader, one of us is the New Reader. I Most of the time, 75% of the time. Uh, we are talking about the Patreon pick this month, which is Green Arrow Longbow Hunters by Mike Grell. So this is just a three issue mini mm -hmm. series, correct? But it's part of a you, you got this his longer yeah. run. Yeah. So really quick, uh, this is following up Crisis on Infinite Earths. It's it done in the very same style that Batman Year One and Superman Man of Steel kind of uh relaunched those series right like george perez wonder woman so they gave mike grell this book uh of green arrow because he had this idea back in the 70s and he had a really cool idea about somebody some young lady maybe a young boy called black arrow that was hunting ex-nazis that were still around in the world because he is uh the child the girl or the boy, whoever it was going to be, because he hadn't decided yet, was going to be the child of a concentration camp couple that got killed during that time. Oh, so then that's why they went with more of the, well, the Japanese camps. This was in the 80s, right? So yeah. so much time had oh, passed. Okay. It wouldn't be believable if somebody, because back then when he wanted to do it, the child would have been in mid-30s and still, you know, capable of doing all these things. Yeah. So at the time, Julie, uh, who was in charge? I can't remember who was at DC. They were like... How about a young, <laughs> it got ridiculous and Mike Rowe was like, that's not the story I want to tell, but maybe one day. So he kind of kept that idea and I mean, we did kind of get a black arrow and shadow in here. So it's, it's really interesting how this came to be, but yes, this was a whole new era for green arrow. Uh, I hate to say starting over a new, because if you read this, there are still things that have happened in his past that he's still talking about, um, you know, especially the uh, Dennis O'Neill and Neil Adams run. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting that DC still kept aspects of his run in continuity. Because well, he's like 54 at the in, time of this book. In in this book, he's 43. You know why? Because he mentioned... Oh, 43. Oops. Yeah, I got he's... my things, my numbers. Yeah, yeah, numbers. So he says... I'm an old, he kept saying, yeah. I'm an old man. I'm an old man. And every time I read this, though, this is the first time I've read it since I, I'm 45 now. And I remember the. I think the last time. Oh I yeah, read I was. It, I was thinking about. I was thinking about you when I was oh, reading this part. Actually, what do you mean, old man? Here, Ollie. What are we talking about? Um, but yeah, I'm gonna. You know, if you, uh, I'll let you kind of give you uh, uh, give, give the pitch of this. It was three issues, and then that led on to the Mike Grell ongoing series. Yeah. So three issues, like 127 pages or something. I remember looking at numbers, but. Um, they're pretty lengthy issues, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, they're oversized, yes. Yeah, they're pretty lengthy issues there. Um, I would say it feels a little more prose heavy with the writing, but in a, in a really great way. Mm -hmm. In a way that like the writing um, really added to the story versus you know some other works previously that came okay. out that maybe is just like descriptions and not needed, right? Mm -hmm. um, so basically... At this point, we're looking at, we start off with um, Ollie and Dinah. Part of this is them moving in t together. He has this place. Uh, I think he called it Sherwood Castle um, or something, <laughs> Sherwood Forest. Yeah. Um, they're moving in together. They're having kind of talks about their, their life in general. And at the same time, he's also tracking a serial killer in the city. And so we're going back and forth with that at the beginning of this. So... He's looking for this. At the same time, it's a lot of like conversation between him and Dinah of just his life. So I think he's yeah. taking a point in his life where he he's not quite sure where he is. He's he's, he's at this age where he's like, I you know I, I'm a grandfather. Like yeah, sure, Roy's not exactly my kid, but he's basically my son, and I'm a grandfather now. And like I have to think about these things, but I want to have kids. And also, what am I doing with my life? And I used to be this. I used to be like this sharp shooter who always stuck to like how it was in the day. And I've lost my basics. I've, I've, I've been sticking on trick shots and I've lost my way. And I don't really know what I'm doing with this. And also you heard the stories about me on the Island, but those weren't real. 
those were made up. Oh yeah, that was the really pirates cool. Pirates coming by, all, no, that didn't happen. It was two druggies, and of course they call me Green Air. They've had so much green that that's what they would see. So like, yeah, I took down two guys that were like, they were high, super on high. <laughs> they kept all yeah, they kept seeing I, was Green Arrow, and I sent them back, but not because of like. I took them down and sent them back, not because of like wanting to be, I just didn't want to be involved in it. So it wasn't this big, high or mighty thing. I chose to become this, this green air, this Robin Hood, because that's what the news was calling me, not the other way around. And he also talks about being on the island, learning to hunt. And he's I love like, love that. When, when he's scared. like, oh, so he, he was like, I, I was scared, not because of just making it out on the island, but because it felt good to kill. Like he's like, I didn't enjoy it, but it was just like, I could see myself becoming a hunter. And it keeps going yeah. back to that idea, right? Like uh, the idea of hunter and prey, and then the idea of what exactly a hunter is. And yeah, the narration is wonderful. Oh, it's so well done. It's so well done. Because it goes back and forth of him talking about and, and him having these flashbacks. But the flashbacks are done in a different way as, as well as the narration and, and those bubbles and how that's put together. Mm -hmm. um but i love that back and forth because yeah he talks about this where he's like i started to feel myself enjoying it being part of this this sort of like primal hunting and i didn't like where that was going so now i don't hunt animals i don't do that anymore i swear i never kill, kill. Yeah. i don't kill oh yes yeah, i won't he said i i don't kill and i don't hunt animals but he said i, I he said i won't i'll never hunt dot, 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 animals so he talks about hunting yeah humans but not with the intent to kill and the way this is set up we see this set up at the same time we're 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 also, it's really well, I like the way this is done because there's a lot of like foils in here. The other foil is, is, is that serial killer in here that enjoys purely killing for killing. Yeah, so there's like three storylines, right? Yeah. Like actually four and you're thinking, how is this going to connect? Yeah. Uh, you've got the guy that's going, a guy or woman, because both him and Dinah don't know yet, that is going around killing women, young women around the ages of 20, you know, usually- A lot of, se a lot of sex workers, yeah. I was going to say, yeah, usually ladies of the evening. Uh, and they don't know who that is. And then you've got somebody that's selling drugs in Seattle and people are ODing on this. Uh, and then you've got a mysterious, like, I like this aspect, like old men around the same age that really don't have the same jobs that are dying. They're being hunted. He calls it hunted down, uh, because you know, they found arrows in them and stuff. Yeah. And, all of this is, is connected. Like, keep in mind, I love it. What was the name of the shop? It's the green. Oh, it's a cool name. Uh, Nottingham. Do you remember the name of the, the floral shop? No. It's a, oh, it's, sure so, it's, it's so witty. I'm like, oh, how, how the hell has this not happened? I was, I was in Robin Hood, but I don't remember <laughs> a lot of pieces of Robin Hood. <laughs> wait, wait. What did you just did you say? You were in Robin Hood? Yeah, in the play. Oh, I thought you meant the Kevin Costner movie, which is that amazing. would be wild. If I if I was <laughs> and I in forgot your age, I, you weren't even I, born. Back then. I just kept it from you. Honestly, I wish that I I did have some cameo in something, and I just never talked about it until it was way. And you just now. until now until we're doing this live. Yeah. Um. Anyway, yeah. So they're in Seattle. They're moving to a different city, and I thought it was really sweet because you're right. It is a moment of like almost realizing that you're not as young as you used to be. You're a little bit slower. Uh, you don't see as well. And he's asking Dinah to like settle Talk down. He's like, I, I, I want to, I want to marry you. I want, I want to. And have she's kids. like, Why? We have been together much longer than most married couples. I like what we have. Why now? Because she can also recognize that he's in something right now. Like he's, oh yeah, he's searching for something. And I love that conversation. There's a really great conversation in there. And I was really worried about how it's going to end up towards the end, where like, because I've had writers like try to, I don't know, they retcon it. And I don't like how it's done, but he's like, I want to have children with you. And she said, no, I'm, I don't want to have children. Mm -hmm. And she said, and, and she talks back and forth about how it's just their lives. Don't make room for that. There's this fantastic line where she's like, I would love to have your children, but I don't want to have, or I, I want to have children. Though I don't have orphans. Yeah. She said, like she said, I love kids and that's why I don't want children. Yeah. Because of the profession that he's in and she doesn't want to leave them as orphans. Yeah. Um, I thought that was a really powerful speech and a wonderful moment so between good. both of them, you know, and in this relationship that you've seen other writers tackle, whether it's, you know, uh, Judd Winnick or uh, uh, Chuck Dis uh, Dixon, Jeff Lemire, 
uh, oh, gosh, who, uh, Joshua Williamson has been kicking uh, ass on that title. Killing, killing uh, yeah, really, really good. Um, Andy Diggle and Kevin Smith, you know, they, they've always tackled yeah. this relationship between them. Oh, uh, Judd Winnick, I think. The, well, Winnick's, by, Winnick's by far my favorite out of the both of the relationship between uh, Black Canary and Ollie. You know, it's really cool is throughout this, you never hear him or anyone call him Green Arrow. It's just all yeah. in between. And, and that is throughout the entire run of Mike Grell's. Oh, yeah. Uh, 60, I've got to read the rest. I'm obsessed issues. already. Oh, like, it's oh, it's so I've good. I've got to read all of this. It's phenomenal. Like, he doesn't draw the rest of the series. I think, who is oh, it? Oh, that's a bummer. Comes in. It. Yeah, it's oh, a very clean. I love it. Well, and I, I would love to see his process, too. And I normally don't look into that stuff because I don't know enough. But I was like, uh -huh. oh, did he use markers at this part? Or did he, what was his medium? Yeah, this he, part? he was using watercolors <laughs> and stuff. Dude, Project Viking, how are you, buddy? I will you oh. attack, my friend. Uh, well, the ultimate green arrow, Oliver Queen right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, but he prefers okay. Booster Gold. I met well, Grell okay, last year, and he said he was based the killer. Yeah, so that's a little behind the scenes. He was, um, Mike Grell was actually, a lot of people complained about how violent this book was, you know, the treatment of women. And in my, I, I interviewed him, and he said this many times in interviews. All he was doing, as a matter of fact, if you read the intro, it's really cool. All he was doing was just taking headlines. He was like, I'm not adding anything. I'm not glorifying it. But these are the things that were happening. And I was just writing them in comic book form. As a matter of fact, in the intro, he talks about how, I don't want to spoil this, because this, th there was a true event that was happening in real life. And he wrote a story in the comic book, in the first omnibus, that preceded how it played out in real life six oh, by six wow. months. And he was like, it was just so cool that it happened. And it happened to somebody that was named uh, Ollie, too. Yeah. Dan Jurgis was uh, Grail's favorite artist in the book. Jurgens kicked it, man. He killed it, too. He's oh, Miss Jurgens, I'm happy. Yeah, and I can't, I can't speak to the rest of the book, but just in these three issues, honestly, I didn't feel like it was exploitative. I just felt like it was very real to what women women sex workers experience. It didn't feel exploitative. I've read ex exploitative, like, violent books towards women, right? Mm -hmm. Like, ugh, fever dream, ugh. By George R. R. Martin. Oh, uh, it's disgusting. I haven't read that. Not that. Don't ever. Like I was <laughs> physically ill after reading it. That yes, that did it. That was. They were very much like. This did not feel that way. I felt like it was done with a lot of like respect for what I saw mm -hmm. of like the victims in here. So I was I was pretty happy with how that was put together. I. Uh, I think. You know, it was coming from a place of like, why Why do you love talking about violence? Why do you portray these characters? This is a comic book and people want to leave reality to come and escape to a comic book story. And I can see that, right? Like, I can see yeah. if you do live in a violent city or whatever, you see it every day. Why would you want to read that reminds you of something that's going on at the six o'clock news, right? Um but I think the way he handled it was done so well yeah. um, with the narrative. And, of course, you know, the, the overall, like, how the stories are. So we haven't even talked about the stories connected. So we are introduced to a young lady here. Her name is Shadow uh, throughout these pages. And yeah. she's connected to the stories in a, in a very unique way um, that she's kind of a younger version of him and i love the fact when he see like he finds the arrow and he gives it to the, the detective he's like this is what you're looking for look you're looking for somebody young probably a kid maybe a woman somebody that's not strong that can hold you know this kind of bow oh man it's so good it's so detailed so much research yeah. went into this yeah it's i really was really awesome. i was really pleased because i i always worry when we get into like a stereotypical uh japanese or chinese like narrative mm -hmm. right because you're like oh what are we gonna do with this did you do you know but i was pretty pleased with how it was put together like obviously he did his research into japanese archery like i feel like that was put together really well like the whole setup and then talking about i think he talked about the camps in a very um informative way which i appreciate it oh I think yeah he did his that research very well and That's so, actually like, how I found out about the camps. Really? I, because I was a kid reading this stuff, yeah. right? I didn't know. Like, I'm serious. Comics taught me a lot. It was before yeah. the internet. We never talked about it in schools. So I remember thinking, what? what? What is he talking about? Japanese concentration camps. I was probably 
13, 14 yeah. when I read this. And yeah, it's something that you didn't talk about in school. Or at least we weren't taught yeah. where I went to school. And it was before the internet, right? When when things are out, just out there. Uh, and that was the first time I had heard about it. So of course I went to do some research as you do. I, I mentioned this to on my interview with Garth Dennis because we both bonded over the fact that you find out a lot about history through comics. Like, oh, yeah. Like comics, comics is what taught him about the whole idea of Sarah. Like we bonded over that, like the idea of Sarah and those lady warriors. Uh, he found out from a comic book and me, I found out so much like Chris Claremont. I, if it wasn't for Chris Claremont at that age, reading new mutants, I don't think I would have been questioning why are Vietnamese people speaking French? This <laughs> yeah, is so people, weird. I love this. Cause like people talk a lot about like, Oh, keep the politics out of my book. A lot of times what they're saying, right. It's not like, actually politics they're like keep these real life things that are happening outside of my book but like mm -hmm. the media at the time reflects what's happening everywhere that's happened well, i always. think he did a he did a yeah he did a phenomenal job of doing because yeah. he does i mean he doesn't shy away from keeping what you just said the politics in the book he didn't yeah. he never shies away from that he just does it in such a unique way he tells he tells it through the perspective so of that. ollie that all this stuff is going out you know you see the corrupt system as a matter of fact, in the first three issues, you see the corrupt system, how yeah. powerful these people are and how they can make people disappear and who they are. Right. And that in the ties to Shadow and how she came to be. So she was an orphan and sort of history. Sorry, there's Whitney. I love you. Yeah, it does. I love it. Uh, Mouse is a really powerful comic. Like So. I do want to talk about Shadow because I okay, we, get, we get her background. She's someone who's basically been raised as not of her own self, right? She's basically raised as like a tool of revenge and vengeance mm -hmm. for her family. Like they are training her and her beau to be a killer. That's her whole point. Her whole, every shot should be one shot. That one arrow should take a life every time is basically what she's been raised to do. Like without necessarily thought, but just like, if you're going to shoot an arrow, this is its purpose. Which is great because we talked about like I don't know I got I got really literary with this in my head. Okay. Yeah, the Akaza. Um, because we he talked about like the violence and everything in here, and I think that was so great that we had that he wrote like the serial killer in here because you have like these three versions of like people who hunt or kill, and they're very different. Like Ollie's very much I'm not killing anymore because I'm afraid of what that means, and I don't ever want to be that person. And then we have someone who kills for fun entirely just yes. for their own pleasure. And then we have shadow where it's the morality to it. There's nothing else tied to it. It's like, this is the code. And like, it's about honoring like what I have to do. It's not about me enjoying it or not. It's not about anything else. This is just the purpose of it. This is like what, this is outside of me. I am just the puppet doing the stuff. And I love that. I love the comparison throughout. Like I, I really want to follow her throughout the whole well, she Dang. she does become an important character throughout the series. Now she changes a little bit as well, as the she was in the goes. show, right? Like they use they, I know I know they've used I her didn't, again. I didn't make it that far. So did they you, use her in the show? That's, okay, how was that? Yeah, I mean Kenneth can say more to it, but okay. Yeah, they uh, they chose they put someone in there that's like her. They always tie it back in. It feels it's very much like it feels more like Wolverine and like his Japanese. Like I love that. <laughs> it feels like DC. Like DC was like, oh man we should have a character with like a, like a relation to Japan some way or like, you know, Hong Kong or whatever. And they're like, green arrow can have it. <laughs> Give it to him. <laughs> um, this was released in 1987. So the, this originally came out in 1987. You made the street crime realistic. Maybe the single most disingenuous critique or argument from anyone reading superhero comics, basically saying, I only want sanitized glorification of violence, which happens a lot of the time, oh, yeah. right? Whenever you see something like this, uh, I, I thought it was great. I love the idea mm -hmm. of moving him out of superheroes and, you know, giving him more of a less Errol Flynn and more of that maybe classic Robin Hood look. Because, I mean, oh, you only see Black so Canary cool. in costume one time, and that's when they were having Yeah, she's time. like, still got it? And he's like, oh, mama, let's go. <laughs> yes, he's like, keep that wing on. Uh, but I love them. 
yeah it was it was excellent i'm uh i love how it ties all together right like it kind of reminds me a little bit of the way the wire is done um it's one of my favorite shows so the wire you know you start off in season one the streets then you find out in season two what's bringing in the drugs from other countries uh season three is the corrupt system of like the the school and stuff and the, by the time you get to like season four it's like the government and this works like that where everything is connected you know these people are dealing drugs these people are killed um the guy that was killing women i thought he he had an an interesting story that I, I keep forgetting every time I read this, how it's connected. And I was thinking this time around that, Oh, that's right. He kind of just, you know, blows it off saying, no, no, that guy's dead. Because remember the detectives like, no, you're wrong. There's been another woman that's been killed. And it turned out that it was a pimp that had killed that girl. Cause she was holding out on him. Right. Yeah. And he was like, no, that guy's dead. There's no way he's still out there. And I, and that's kind of where they leave it. But again, which I thought was so good, right? Because like that's so how it works in the street. Yeah, you found this one killer, but there's kills of this every day. Yeah, who are killing women, who are killing sex workers that never get caught, and nothing ever happens to them, and no one would pay attention anyways. Man, yeah, that was a really good point in the way yeah. that he, the way it was done. It's very classy, very classy for the, for you know. The subject at hand, of course. Another thing that reminds me of its times capsule status is the line yeah. where they mentioned the AIDS. Oh, dude, that oh, was that uh, was awful. It was hard. It uh, was like he, so it, on it. Though. But but it's the way that people thought, right? Not everybody. Yeah, because he was like, well, well these listen, type of people. Prostitution is down. So honestly, this was a great thing. And he's like, and AIDS is like clear. We got the AIDS scare too. going. Yeah, I was like, that's, damn. But that's how cops thought, and probably still do. Uh, <laughs> You know, yeah. My favorite issue from Mike Grell's run is Green Arrow Annual Number Two. That one's awesome, Kenny. Uh, I would say that Green Arrow stories have always had a political political edge from Traveling Heroes onwards. I if I had I I'll be honest, I've read Traveling Heroes, and I before this, I don't think I kept up with Green Arrow. Green Arrow, I really didn't get into. Honestly, I didn't get into until Kevin's. No, Chuck, it was Chuck Dixon's run because he was writing about Connor Hawk. He wasn't writing about yeah. Ollie at the time. Um, he was writing about another character. And this one here was kind of how I went and got back issues and got into it. And I really like Mike Grell's writing style because it's like somebody that has this old school mentality but not writing dialogue heavy or narration oh, heavy. It it so like it's perfectly. really good. Like he's someone that I feel like could write prose very well. I don't know if he has or not, but oh, it was done so I well. Like, like everything felt so purposeful. Yes. I'll, I'll tell you right now. Yes. After reading this. If this I'll is a definitive Green Arrow run, it's yeah, it's, it's my favorite Green Arrow run. I mean, oh, there are good. others that have been really good. Like really, really. Judd Winnick is probably the, close second to uh to it i'm a i'm a big fan of chuck dixon's run but again that's not ollie that's the character of connor hawk but there was just a really cool team ups then uh brad Meltzer, i actually liked his run as short as it was um and i'm trying to think was it who's the guy that took over not andy diggle i think it might have been lemire after a while lemire had a oh, I like lemire's run. run yeah but lemire's run honestly felt more like the show though and less like this type of Ollie. This and type that of Ollie may have been part of the direction from editorial. Too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's like, hey, make him younger, make him hot. Don't make him anything like this old Robin but Hood. But Williamson's killing. I like Greener when it's like this. I think he's oh. great. I liked uh, Williamson's first four ish three oh, issues. It's so good. It's so good. I mean, good. What's up, Brocky? Uh, the first run of Green Arrow I got into was Kevin Smith. I do you like that? Yeah. And we actually did an overview mm -hmm. or review of that on the I channel. I still want to read him and Green Lantern together. I wanted to get that run and read it because I, I heard that's the really fun. You, the, the classic? The Dennis yeah, O'Neill? because everyone's like, that's like a buddy cop deal. And that's... It's good. That's well, And that's the one with your boy, Roy, that yeah. you know, he, he gets into that. Uh, is the Omni a quick read or wordy? I will be honest, brother. I um, It's not it's not wordy at all. Let me, let me just... Random pages, okay? Look at the lack of narrative boxes, like no narration. It's just dialogue, easy to follow. I mean, that's the way Mike Grell writes. And and what Maddie said is true. 
if there's narration boxes, it's there for a reason, right? It's there yeah. to set up or it's there to uh, kind of foreshadow things to come. It's done for a reason. It's not wordy for the sake of being wordy. I love Kevin Smith's run. As short as it was, I feel like it took me longer to read those six issues than these three long issues. I think I could have read this omnibus in the amount of time that I read. Yeah. Kevin Smith is wordy. He likes talking and he likes dialogue. So, um, and you yeah, can if, try, you, if I say it's not wordy, then it, it isn't because I've read a lot of things. Where I'm like, did you need to describe what's with Cyclops is doing? Because hey, I can hey, see it on the paper. Hey, where's Claremont alone? Uh, I'm I just looking at random pages. I was just giving a random example. It's not really yeah, good. random. Uh, um, yeah, not a lot of dialogue. Letting the yeah. art carry. I mean, oh, the yeah. art's so good. And I yes. love there's that really great sequence where they're trying to like interview people who saw Ollie. And like, who'd you see? And the, like, the oh, punk yeah. that he beats up sees this almost like, you know, Green Goblin esque. He's like, oh, it looks yeah. like this guy. And the woman basically, I think he illustrated him straight out of like the old Robin Hood movies. Like, oh, such a nice man with a nice tush. And he looked like this. <laughs> and it was just, it was basically just like the old Robin Hood movies. Oh, like, that's perfect. Yeah. I, uh... Uh, wait a second. I would never hate on Claymont. Never. No, no, she would not. Love that man. She would not. I'm just hating yeah. on older comics in general. I just had to choose a character. <laughs> Cyclops. You went with Cyclops. I don't know. You know what? He deserves to get made fun of. Uh, you know, he, he's uh, he's come a long way. He's grown on me. Have you two also read the concurrent, the question? Oh, my God. I love the question. I don't think I and have. That would be I've a fun one to, to do. Uh, volume 2 comes out next month, as a matter of fact. Be a good one. I read through volume one in less than 15 hours. Very quick read. The dialogue and action gets right to the point. Yeah. That was what people really enjoyed about Mike mm -hmm. Grell's writing. He brought like a fresh take to, you know, this class and, and still keeping it a classic style. And I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, the run maintains that it's good throughout the whole thing. There are a couple of things, but. I mean, it's going to happen whenever you're having over 60 plus issues oh, yeah. that you're writing that I didn't agree with that he did. But it's also the thing that everybody does with Ollie, too, that I I never liked about the character. Oh, um, no. I, is he being like a a man ho or what? <laughs> when you say the thing I like about Ollie, I was like, <laughs> it's is hard. He, he cheating? <laughs> he's weak. He's weak. He's, he's got a he night is not his weakness. Where have I got that from but, him? But you know. Oh, see, that's why I couldn't get married. She knew. Dinah knew. What's up, Kyle Rayner? I, I read uh, Green Arrow Longbow Hunters with the DC graphic novels that were published in the UK. Don't remember the British editorial, but here in Argentina is Savat. Okay. I wonder who published it. Was it not Panini, but uh, uh, Tashin, maybe? I uh, always wanted to see Justin Hartley play Earth 2 Alan Scott. Felt like Lemire's Green Arrow looked a bit like Justin Hartley's Smallville Green Arrow, which oh. is interesting as I think when those were coming out, Arrow had started or was about to, New 52 to, yeah, New 52 was what, 20, 2011? Was it 2011, I think, when the New 52 line started? Oh. So yeah, you may be right. Thought Ollie was a man ho. It was part of me. <laughs> They put him there. Oh I my gosh! And it was like there are moments that you're like, oh, they're finally happy. And Who would have? Then... Yeah, they gotta stop writing that. They gotta stop writing <laughs> that. Listen, they should be happy together. Quit that. Throw that out well, they, there. They were. Remember, they were for a while, and then yeah, uh, and then they messed. They up. actually had a title together: Green Arrow and Black Canary. Which I liked. Which, which honestly, fun. more of that. I think some writers are like, I don't know how to write a couple together that doesn't have like issues. Quit it. All right, all right, Joe Casada. Leave them together. Keep them together. Keep uh, keep Lois and Clark together. Leave these people alone, okay? Thank you. Uh, let's see. The last few issues moved from mature readers to regular. Yes, it did, because this was uh, mature. There's sexy oh. time in here. There's nipples and butts and lots of vulgarity. Nothing too gratuitous or anything. Oh, yeah. And as far as the violence, I mean. It wasn't too bad. Yeah. I mean, but it's. It's real violence, right? It's not – some people don't like real violence. Like my wife, for example, loves Kill Bill, one of her favorite movies. Yeah. 
but can't stand watching things like the Sopranos because those things happen. Oh, and it's yeah. that type of art that you're going to find. That's fair. Here because it's realistic, right? People getting stabbed and things like that. It, they're <laughs> not, it's not overdone. It's not comical. Mike Grell became one of my favorite writers after reading his Legion of Superheroes. Later, his independent John Sable is freaking awesome. And Shaman's here. I'm still, I would love to enter. I've had a, um, I've interviewed him for a short interview, but I'd love to have him on the show and ask him about Shaman's Tears. Because I that's a book that I would love to see. Yeah, I feel like collected. I need to read more Mike Grell now because I really Warlord is I, one of my favorites. I love that have one. I not and, read any other Mike Grell because it seems unlikely. Well, he he hit the he hit that spot in the like I want to say probably his name blew up in the 80s around this time because of this run. Yeah. Uh, and then he did a lot of independent stuff. He did stuff for Eclipse Comics. He went over to Image to do Shaman's Tears. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to try it out because I, I want to finish this because I really like it. You should. Seriously, it's a it's a really good run. It's it's throughout the whole thing. Oh my gosh. It's some some of the things that happen through here and the changes in the character are just awesome. Uh, uh, I do want to highlight this one from Heath because like, I mean, like anyone else love. Oh yeah, our dance with the old ladies he rescues in Longboat. Oh, it's so cute. They're the ones I that love him. were they the ones that described him as like Errol Flynn, or was that another set of ladies? I can't remember. I think that was a, the other old lady. Dude, old I ladies. love. They love him. <laughs> what is his name? Fire. Is that the dude's name? The sniper. They set oh, him yeah. up so well. It's like, oh yes, my man's already out there. Don't worry, you won't see him. And they won't see him. And then he just gets shot with an arrow. <laughs> like, he's just taken yeah. out like that. He even makes it, like, there he is down at the bottom. Listen, that man was a nerd, okay? Um, they showed him, and I was like. But look, he's happen. even on the inside of the cover. Here, I was like, wow, they really have this They pulled, like, a scream where they're like, this guy's going to be important. I love that. <clears throat> John, thank you for the super chat. This was What's a great up, omnibus that I wouldn't have bought without uh the near mint stamp of approval i don't know how this flew under my radar i feel the same i really like oh it so man much. i'm glad you, you all enjoyed it i love bringing books that i enjoy to other people's attention and the fact that they like it too it's very it. important to me right i i, oh, yeah. I, hate, I hate to uh suggest something to somebody and they're like man that was awful why would you suggest this great run one panel that stands out is ollie and laurel in bed and she said she wants babies, but she won't have orphans. Yeah, yeah powerful moment. That line. Powerful moment. I love and it. So well done. And I, I was worried. I couldn't enjoy it at the time because I was like, because I was like, they're gonna pull something where they're gonna have her like she'll be saved at the end, and she'll be like, I've changed my mind. And I was like, thank God, Mike Girl didn't do that. The bar is so low in certain comic books. I'm like, they're gonna pull this. They're gonna pull it. And that made me so mad. It didn't happen. I was like, yes, Dinah, stick to your guns. It didn't happen. <laughs> um, let me see here. It's a great run. I look forward to it. Each new volume, super satisfying. Two big volumes. Great. I've never read John Sable, but I know that was a series right before Green Arrow. Yeah, there. I think volume two is up on Kickstarter. That was volume one, and it sold out everywhere, the hardcover. But uh, I'm pretty sure you could probably order volume one. They'll reprint it with a volume two. Since he's a, another favorite character of yours, how did you like the Connor Hawk Green Arrow era? How do you think it ought to be collected? Yeah, how is that? It's different. It's not this, but honestly, it was the title that kind of got me into Green Arrow. Because, really? I mean, I was a sucker for the stupid gimmicky things DC was doing. Replacing Batman with uh, Jean-Paul Valley, right? Wonder Woman being replaced by Artemis. Guy Gardner turning into Guy Gardner Warrior and Alien. Uh, that, uh, Superman getting killed, like all these things were happening, and I was, and it worked on people like me. I was working at the comic book store, and I was like, I've only read a handful of Green Arrow issues. Yeah, he's got this cool cover. What was the, the series called? It was a, oh my gosh, where, where Eagles Dare. It was a five part like issue thing that Chuck Dixon wrote, and the final part is where Ali dies, right? Like he blows up. So then Connor Hawk becomes the new Green Arrow. The same thing, Green Lantern, right? Hal Jordan becoming or becoming the Parallax, and then Kyle Rayner becoming the Green Lantern. And the same thing happened here. Connor Hawk was the new Green Arrow. And there was yeah. team-ups between him and the new Green Lantern. I really enjoyed it. I don't think, I mean, calling it calling an omnibus like Green Arrow by Chuck Dixon 
would be a hard sell because it would only be one omnibus and we still had the follow-up series to that uh maybe um so maybe connor hawk green arrow and i'll tell you what there was there's still and it still stings there is one thick trade paperback they announced it wasn't solicited it was only in the catalog four years ago it's connor uh, connor hawk volume one and it's still it never came out but you yeah. can still find it in the catalog I have volume one of Green Arrows, Mike Grell, and my card at In Stock Trades, along with the Flash by Mark Wade. You have some good oh, taste, man. Kenny. Uh, runs like this and Miller's Daredevil really feel like these type of heroes were meant for creative for the 80s, almost like their stories had to be in the darker 80s. There, you know, there's a lot of truth behind that statement that I can see because maybe that's the route they need to go with some of these TV shows, like a period piece. Well, there's going to be said about style. not having access to certain technology that we kind of like got in the way. with. Something. Oh yeah. Like a text and, message would always solve these problems. And I don't think that all must be like in the eighties, but I will say like the downside of some of like the modern TV show versions of this is that they make them too young or too pretty or whatever else. And I think that detracts from where green arrow is really his best. To me, like, I, I have the same issue with, like, Batman a lot of times, too, when they show him in movies, where I'm like, these characters are really good because of the people supporting them and not just because of their own thing. You know, Green Arrow by himself, yeah, that's interesting, but Green Arrow and his family dynamics make him much more interesting than me and make him somebody who has something to lose. More so, and it's, I feel the same way about Batman a lot of times. But, but, but Green Arrow even is much, 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 much more so. <laughs> Well, because Green Arrow means more to you, right? Like Green Arrow is. Well, I think the they both mean a lot to me, but I think they're both more interesting when they have the family members involved. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're just like, you know, some guy with trauma and not people to like close you to protect. And like, woo, never read that before. Um, <laughs> no, you're 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 right. You're right, and I think it really depends on the writer. Yeah, like, it does. The way the writer uh, handles that stuff. Connor was I didn't read much of it. I really liked it. And honestly, when when Judd Winnick was writing it, I really liked that family that he was building for them. And of course, you know, the, the problems they were each having, where they came from. Did did they go so like I've only read I haven't read anything like Connor specific. I've only read Connor and other things. I read him in like a lot of newer things. Mm -hmm. Um was he around in 52? Maybe it was book pre-52. But um did that oh, series mean, do a good job of like was he has he always been mixed and have they always been a good job with that because remember like i read one of them where i was like did you make connor white for this that's weird uh was he like I, I i think so but much like dude i swear to god maddie i think I, i've shared this story yeah. with you. it wasn't until the and maybe it's just me it, it happened with green lantern i had no idea kyle rayner was half latino wait what oh yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah i heard that later yeah like, I was like, what? <laughs> like, it wasn't yeah. until the internet that I found, like, like, what do you mean he's half Latino? And I didn't need a DC cover with him eating tacos or burritos to tell like me. Like an afterthought, like a J.K. Rowling afterthought. Oh, and but, also? <laughs> but I think it's like one of these things I don't notice. I said the same thing yeah. when I re when whenever we did Old Reader, New Reader on Invincible. I was like, he's half Asian? What? Like, I didn't know. And I it's funny because one of our like viewers, he was like, oh, more I'm Asian. And I didn't notice either. So it made me well, feel Well, yeah, I don't think that's really. But I think with Connor, it was one of those things where I was, it's like no one agreed on the skin tone at all. And I'm oh, like, oh, I mean, but even, but I mean, if you what? look at, if you look at Storm or you look at characters like Roberto da Costa, Sunspot, oh, right? Yeah. When they first start out, they're so much darker than later on. And I don't know Just if that was like a choice. One piece. Editorial. <laughs> I don't know if that's an editorial choice or if, like the colors were easier to come by. I bet I, I noticed that like whenever it, I'm, oh my gosh, by the time you get to like Jonathan Hickman's run, I had this argument with Amanda over Sunspot. I'm like, no, he like part of his, part of his thing is that he's like a darker skin Brazilian. She was like, there's no way look at him in uh, Jonathan Hickman's Avengers. And I was like, oh my God, you're right. Well, he's it is not. pretty typical in like all media in the past like 10 years, like, cartoons as well well they'll have characters that are like legacy characters and uh -huh. every 10 years they get a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter and that's <laughs> maybe what happens maybe they're saving on color the i don't know that's so nice of you you're like well maybe 
Yo, the babe, you're, you're also talking, you're you're also talking to the maybe dude that didn't know. Maybe they're saving know. on color. It's not colorism. <laughs> but maybe you're talking to the guy that didn't know Kyle Rayner was Latino. I was like, what? They're, no, hell no. There's no way he's Latino. That's because they didn't. That was an afterthought. That's why. Oh, yeah. I know. That was a retcon. They're I, like, uh, I don't, uh, like, the whole thing with Invincible, I don't think that was a retcon. It was just something I didn't notice. Yeah. So you know what? Maybe That's I'm the least racist one because I never see color and I just see Kyle Rayner. You know, people who say they don't see color are like, <laughs> I don't Wait see color. Around on me. Are you blind? This is why we yeah. only do one show a month. <laughs> see, this is how you guys can have fun conversations about race without uh, doxing people on the internet. I don't even know what doxing means yet. I've been told before, that's, but I don't know what it means. That's good. Stay Google safe. It. Stay safe. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Maddie. Were you as shocked and upset about how that Omni Evergreen list turned out as most of us? Uh, Maddie would probably did not watch it, but she's going to be in our manga Evergreen list because I need somebody uh, with some expertise. So her and Tina will be joining me for Let's that talk. when we do it. Tina's Docs. been mad reading. How she's do you like read comics good. if you don't see color? That's why Guys. I read manga, Aria. <laughs> He's coming. He doesn't see color. Stop it. Stop it. Don't take that out of context. Don't try to get me take canceled. 2024, it. baby. Just joining. How are you all doing? I haven't read much Green Arrow solo stuff. I've heard uh, I've heard good things about this run and Kevin Smith's run. Any preference on starting? Oh, I think this is a great starting. It's so point. good. I, I don't I, know if it's like, I think it's a good taste to then explore more about the character because you don't have to know everything. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I started with Green Arrow stuff like in rebirth or whatever <laughs> that's because i want to read other but everybody's people, but got a, a starting point right that, that leads you somewhere um let me get this question right here because i don't know the answer to that. hopefully you're doing well jacob maybe i missed it or forgot but did eddie fires ever appear in arrow that's the sniper dude did he appear in arrow the show I really dug oh, his and Holly's relationship in the comic. I don't know. Maybe. There were so many things happening. The problem is I watched all I, of the CW DC shows. And man, they made some decisions. And it's really hard well, to follow. I, I stopped watching. I've only, I saw three seasons of Arrow. And I saw one season of The Flash. And I know it's got a fan uh, following. And then I watched Crisis on Infinite Earths. I Legends did watch of that. Tomorrow. Perfect. I know you live after and die season one. Show. You can skip season one. Really? Watch season two okay. until like, well, you don't have to finish it. But oh, uh, that Nat is pure comic book fan joy. Okay. Chef's kiss. Fantastic. Okay, so apparently he did appear. He was the antagonist on the island. Oh. Thank you for that, Lynch. Thank you. Thirty-five years of Sagio Jimbo with only like three color specials. But if you get the IDW versions, they are all in color. Oh, I have never read Usagi Ujimbo. I feel like a fake manga. Of course, racist against the He is. I he am. Is. <laughs> Just oh, you're, great. No more can only see black and white. Shut up, Psycho Cleveland. Green Arrow Year One is great. Oh, yeah. That was Andy oh, that is really good. and Jock did that, the artwork in that. And they I named a character in Arrow after him. In the what? show. Which uh, Jock or well, Andy Diggle? Andy Diggle. Okay. Legends of Tomorrow. Hey, happy belated birthday to you, James. Oh, I didn't get to tell you yesterday. Birthday, or no, I messaged you yesterday, but I didn't get to say it out loud. So there you go. Let's see. Jumping in to say, uh, I didn't want to mention him earlier because I want Maddie to read it. Yeah, I don't want to see what happens the to the character. Uh, Jumping in to say Longball Hunters was one of my very first comics as an older reader and really drew me into the DC library outside of Batman and Superman. Wonderful. Love hearing that. Ha, huh? I know season one of Legends is great, but I still love it. It's a hard sell. <laughs> Arrow one. Season one is good. I liked it. Season two is fantastic. It was great. Season three is underrated. That's where I stopped. Season four and on are like, oh. Yeah. Hey guys, I love Green Arrow since I was a kid. I was in junior high when Longbow Hunters came out. It was racy for the times. Um, could agree, and I collected the Grell run. I'm a huge Grell fan. Yes, his run is phenomenal. And honestly, everything he's written, I've enjoyed. Everything that he's written, I I over the years I've just come to love. And I hope one day we get uh, what I really hope DC does is have a Warlord omnibus series with his stuff because that stuff is just great. 
I hate Cycle Cleveland so much. This is why you get banned on all the channels. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. We welcome you. Heard him, about <laughs> he told me on Sunday, and I was like, Welcome back. <laughs> you <laughs> You're safe here. You're safe in our chat. Don't worry about it. Current green arrow yet to be collected and trade paperback. Uh this coming out year? in trade paperback. Trade paperback yeah. in May. It's May? on my no. anticipated reads list, so it better. <laughs> Yeah, May or maybe I'll, uh, I can't remember. I just looked it up. Yeah. Arrow came back for one last gasp with season five, but it was on live support before that yeah. uh, and after, in my opinion. <laughs> when are we going to talk about the Goiter collection up for pre order on Floating World Comics? What is that? Man, he has Do been pushing know? this Goiter comic <laughs> for years. You said me? I don't know what this is. No, Cycle Cleveland has been pushing this Goiter comic collection for, or the Goiter comic for years. What is? Um, all right, Maddie. What so, would you give? Green yeah. Arrow, The Long Bow Hunters, all three issues by Mike Grell. I want to say nine. Nine out of ten. Hey yeah, now. I really yeah. liked it. The more I think about, it, the more I like it. Again, that's just these three issues. But okay. I, really like it. I uh, ten out of ten. It's so. I cool. love it, man. It's so. It it holds up to this day. It's so damn good. I yeah, ten out of ten. I'd love some art prints from this. I wish. I wish. Well, I love. I hope that I, it'd be great if DC released some more of these like poster portfolios, but did it for some older covers. That would hmm. be really cool. I think some covers of this would be really nice to have up. Although I'm eventually going to run out of space. I can't just put all these <laughs> cover posters up. I was going to say, well, you can switch them out. What you need to do is have, uh, I've seen collectors have these frames that open up and you can just slide out the, of yeah. course, you have to be something of a similar size, right? I thought about anyways for my own like photography because I'm putting some up locally. Uh, I'm not going to tell you where that is, anybody in the chat, but I'll tell them more later okay. at the coffee shop. So I got to put some of my artwork. Up. Oh, I heard about this, and now I need to go see this coffee shop. B plus eight out of ten. Yes, if you've read the the book, let us know what you think about this. Is Longbow Evergreen? I don't think so. Honestly, what does that mean? That just because they keep getting re-released all the time? What does that mean? It means it never goes out of print. Okay, <laughs> just like. I don't well, know. See, you, you teach me all this millennial talk like docs and gatekeeping. I'll teach you what evergreen <laughs> means. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Usually because I get called a gatekeeper or docs or I'm doxing or whatever the hell that means. 10 out of 10. That's right. It's great. Yeah. There are 25 by 36 promo posters, but it's one per comic shop. So finding all of them. Oh, up, and oh man. Some of those I have really wanted. Cause, like, any of the Titans ones, I should just ask the local store because I'm like, it's just gonna. Oh yeah, you, you totally should. And if it's Russ, oh give yeah, he loves me. I'm gonna say a touch beyond nine. I'm willing to go nine point five. Agree on nine. Longbow was controversial because of that splash page of Dinah tied and bound. Oh man, yeah, I was, I was, I, I was stressed. That. Ten out of ten. Go read Mace on a Coke. My man, brought I by should. Page. I haven't read it actually. James, nine out of ten. It's my favorite Green Arrow run and my favorite Mike Grell work. Maddie is evergreen. That's right. Evergreen. She's always in print. Always. Oh, in print. Oh, shirt. Always <laughs> in print. <laughs> Get that shirt made before we go to C2E2. Hi, Maddie and Omar. What's up, Phil? How you doing, buddy? I know Phil likes this. Because Mike Grell yeah, is an old guy. So I know Phil likes this. Phil likes this, right? Phil, you like longbow hunters. I'm gonna go 9.5 out of 10, even though it's been 30 years. So it's good. So when are you gonna read? <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> I've showed you. Have I not? I've showed you this. I can't believe you. Uh, you bought them. You're part of the problem, Maddie. Go ahead. Go ahead. What is what? What is Superman? Super versus Ma yeah, the one where he goes to Japanese chain restaurants in the manga. The problem is, I was put these up. They're, they're always right next to me, so it just it's come a bit now. Listen, you gotta read these. You have to. Okay, if I'm forced to read them, we'll do it on your birthday month of July. Yeah. And then we can do it there. That'll be your birthday treat from me. Dude, Superman's a foodie. He is. <laughs> is he is. What, what is? Oh my God. Yeah, look, he literally this happens. Nine out of ten. Look at that. Batman literally rides on his back while he takes him to his preferred restaurant. And then Batman's like, man, this was so good. 
I'm gonna talk to their management, see if we can get one in Gotham. This is uh, gold. This is gold. It's gold. Okay, it's gold. Longbow yeah. Hunters and nine out of ten. I knew you liked it, Phil. You're a man of good taste. I knew that you liked Longbow Hunters. Um, hold on. <laughs> Superman's a foodie. I think you may have lost me on that one. We need a gift of Evergreen Maddie move always in print. James will get on that. James oh, poison Omar, so good. also has three poison ivy. Well, I'm gonna let Maddie decide in July, but come March, it's the uncanny Omar's birthday. Oh, uh, what's now. happening? What's happened then? Dark Maddie Beings again. All the most uh, most controversial. I think <laughs> I think we have drunk Olivia and reader for your birthday again. Why? So you and Amanda can tear my heart out and stomp on it when I no like, me, what? Amanda, and Tina. We'll invite Tina. Tina. Okay, we'll invite Tina. Oh, what's going to be awkward for Tina to read? Hmm. She loves Berserk, man. She tell you like she is mm -hmm. loving Berserk. I'm so proud of that girl. I don't know what would be a good one. Um, I'll think of some stuff. It can't I'll be put it up on, it's on regular YouTube, but if it's an AMA one or something, this Patreon. <laughs> a masterpiece. Death and complexity was insane. Ah, uh, yes. yes, absolutely. Stand uh, and it stands to this day just how great this this series was. Let's just force Tina to read Superman stuff. I feel like Superman oh, I, I feel like is I that her least favorite character. No, well, I think most people just don't like my friends that like manga and stuff. Like Kristen does not like Superman. Mm -hmm. Tina's not a super, but Tina also hates muscles. She's like muscly guys. That's why she's Team Griffith. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Everybody's like, "How could you like Griffith?" And I'm like, "Because he's pretty." That's why. Oh, of course. Yeah. That's why Tina about. Tina doesn't care about muscular dudes with no. complex backgrounds. No. It's not she the way Tina She can't works. stand them. What Patreon level allows me to pick the book for <laughs> review? Oh, my gosh. I don't know, Psycho Cleveland, for you, buddy. I don't know. That's a tough one. I may have to think about that one. There's a crossover with the Warlord, yes, in Grail series uh, with the mistaken identity story because Oliver and Morgan resemble huh. each other. That they because they have they both have that goatee. I was a Grail fan since this Legion of Superheroes. Bought the first issues of Warlord off the stands and still love it. That's what I was just telling Maddie. I wish that DC would collect that Warlord stuff. Grail's Arrow run is in my top five DC runs. Oh man, it's I can so see good. why it's very it's so good. good. All right, I'll, I'll get back to you, Psycho Cleveland. You remind me of that. Tina is cool. She's the best. If any one of you reads this or berserk to your kids, I'm calling CPS. It would be Tina reading it to my kids, and I'm like, what the hell are you doing? I could be mistaken, but I believe the issue with Dinah tied up was the inspiration for the final segment of Arrow Season 2 episode, Broken Dolls. I can't remember. Yeah, I saw that when it was coming out. That's it. Grell took Black Canary criticism to heart. That's why he made her sight uh, kick the shit out of the bus robbers in Hunter's Moon. Man, she's yes. so cool. She is so cool. Everything she does is great. I love her so much. She's a great character. Oh, I love her. I love all the Birds of Prey books. I just, I, she's so great. Uh, and she, you know, not everybody can rock short hair and long hair like that, but she can. She was hot in this. Yeah, I I agree. No, I agree. I assume yeah. we all agree. This is that's I, a... I I am also a fan of her with uh <laughs> black hair or, or or she can keep her you know her wig. I on. do like the blonde. It's a good look. It's a good look. Mm -hmm. Uh let me get to a couple of these. What's up, Robert Marquez? How are you? Hello. Is Warlord a good is Warlord good in a Mike Carey X Men way or Road to? Oh no, no, in a Mike Carey X Men type of way, not to Road to Onslaught like we need it, right? Yeah, Grail's Iron Man was very solid, a very heroic take. The run was has pacing issues. Honestly, that's a run nobody really talks about because when did that happen? That happened after like Joe Casada's run on Iron Man. Have we done Iron Man on Old Reader, New Reader? No, I've never read an Iron Man only book. What's it? okay? Give me uh, honestly for, most for, Marvel for February, things. I haven't read any like character only unless they're like women or Thor. So like, well, or Wolverine. We've done Wolverine. Did we ever one. read Punisher? Every year I say I'm going to read Punisher. And every yeah, year we did uh, Welcome Back Frank, which is the basis of the first movie. It's the Garth Ennis, Steve Dillon story where he he's in that apartment. It's very similar to Hawkeye. Like he he's in that apartment complex. And man, I forgot. That was probably five years ago when we did that one. Okay. Yeah, so I'll I'll think of characters. Oh, I'm curious who you who you want to do. 
I'm open to it. I just have I never knew when which which ones to read. Mm-hmm. Um, because I still want to read Punisher, and then this year, or somebody in the chat gave me recommendations, but this year I also want to read Godzilla. So I've got a book oh on the list to read that James read James Stoko. Stoko. Yeah, the Half Century War is freaking awesome. Yeah, so I want to read Godzilla. So I, I'm trying to expand it a little more this year. I like this. I like this. So I may have to... Uh, I'll have to think what characters we haven't done. You know, James, are you still in the chat? I bet James can give us a a spreadsheet of all the old reader, new readers we've done so I can keep so oh, I can keep God. better track of that. He's he's amazing at this. I don't know how he did it. Like, I asked him for hidden gem, uh, gems one time, and I was like, take take a month, man. It's cool. He got it to me by the end of the day. Like, James, not even that long. It was like hours. I was you like, know, how? I can't depend on a lot in this world. But I can always depend on James. And I don't know what says about my life. <laughs> James is the most constant thing in my dude, life. Dude, James, James, uh, James was a uh, we uh, we were interviewing Tarun Grombeck, which is one of my favorite writers and one of my favorite people to have on the show. And she was like, "Oh, I like your name, James. I may use it in a comic one day." I told James that was his chance to take a shot. Didn't take a shot though. <laughs> Opinions on Black Canary's DC run. Um, Birds of Prey. I think it's my favorite. Uh, whether it's Chuck Dixon or or Gail Simone. G- probably Gail Simone more because she adds the character of Huntress in there. And that's always well, nice. Well, and I, I like some of the like later Birds of Prey stuff as well. Like I like now I like New 52 Birds of Prey. I like the nobody does, Maddie. I think well, you're the only one that does. I just like the girls hanging out. Well, I like the cross. Oh, uh, have you read any of Kelly Thompson? I read the first issue of Kelly Thompson's run. It I just came that. out. Probably two no. months ago. Oh, it's so no, good. I, it. Big I, Bart I, like, is it. I like the rebirth. Of, oh, Big yeah, Bart is in it. How have you not read it? Maybe I'll just add that on. Just saying. For next month. I haven't planned next month, so maybe I'll just tell people. <laughs> I'll be like, well, I think there's only a couple. We need a reread of the Dark Phoenix. Yeah, except maybe it'll be better this time. Maybe we'll turn the tables. We'll have you and Amanda drunk. I'll be sober, and then maybe both of you no, would enjoy it so much drunk. more. All drunk. Let's have. Moonshine. I do not want to go blind. I enjoy that there is absolutely no exhibition to super powers. Through. Yes, that's one of the best things that happens in this, including Ollie beating up Hal Jordan and him just taking it because they are friends. And I think Aaron was asking about the DCU. Oh, oh, the DCU. Is that the um, is that the the webs the web stop? Uh, uh, Manny, one. this is where you come in. One second, let me look it up. As no, oh, that's that's just a new fifty two, right? Um, oh, I don't know what this is. Did I read this? I, I found a Tumblr that's dedicated Black Canary, though. Hmm. I think I miss Tumblr, but sometimes I got you on that shine. He's in Tennessee. Oh, yeah, I, that. like the blend, the like Brendan Fletcher stuff. Sure. Cycles, cycles killing me. <laughs> it's killing me. DCU was right before Rebirth. Okay. Oh, maybe. I probably read it. I just can't. It's when I she was in a band. Okay. It was a 2015 relaunch that fell. Oh, uh, I don't I don't know. Maybe. All right. So before we go, uh, what kind of book should we do next month? What uh? What are you, what are you wanting to read? What what, what are you in the mood for? I guess for? let's do Marvel. Okay, I'll pick and some just Marvel pick books. some single character books. Okay, like runs. You know, we got 14, 13 volumes of Trouble sent to us by Bruce. God bless him. Uh, regarded as one of the worst Marvel comics ever. <laughs> so I mean, we uh, can read maybe we should do Trouble one day and have uh, Melanie join us for that too. Okay. Thank you for the super sticker, JG Exterminators. That's the oh, what's her name? Uh, not Kelly Thompson. Uh, Jenna. She wrote. Let me type it. Oh my Leah god, Williams. Leah Williams. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, this looks cool. Why haven't I read this? Oh, that's up what? your alley. These are it's my a girls? bunch of girls talking sexy time, and now the whole. Okay, so I, I. I it was ridiculous. Like, I'm like, boom, Shit, boom, boom, boom's like 
flashing her boobs. And I was like, man, if Chris Claremont was writing this, he'd be so canceled. But because Leah Williams wrote it, it gets Well, it all depends on how you do it. There was nothing classy about that. We're talking about Boom Boom. Which Let me, I'll which read it. Makes I'll give sense my, in her character. I'll give I'll give my review. Storm for Black History Month. That's what's up. Oh, Ooh, you're right. You're right. Keeping it classy. Spider-Man right. Blue hits during Valentine's. We did that. Oh my gosh, it's been years since we, we did that one. I mean, yeah. I love Beats some Storm. Trouble traumatized an entire generation of Spider-Man fans. Rom. Oh, I would love that. I don't know if I could talk both her and Amanda to read that though. Uh, oh, I've seen the covers to Rom. Isn't there like a is there a collection of that coming out soon or something? Because I feel like I was only there that. was a channel on YouTube that kept you up to date on when collections. Boy, you got listen. Just, I'm busy. <laughs> I'm just I'm just, just saying. Uh yeah, I'm actually shipping out. I uh, gave away three of them because Marvel was kind enough to send me four yeah. covers, and I'm Actually shipping them out tomorrow or Thursday to the three winners along with some other goodies in there. No trouble. I'm saving trouble for a special occasion. Um, Rob looks cute. Looks cute? Yeah, he looks cute. <laughs> there. That should be on the back of the book, Bill. <laughs> Rob <laughs> looks cute. It does. He does. Looks like a cute uh, little all guy. Right, so I'll come up with some Marvel uh, characters and I'll throw it up on the Patreon for people to vote. So if you're wondering how to join that, the description of the video has our link to our Patreon. It starts at a dollar a month. And my social media guy, Taylor, uh, Taylor Talks Comics, is going live on his own channel here in a little bit to talk about some comic book news. Lady Killer nice. would be a good one. Which and I yes, like Miller. I, I like that one. Anything else, Madeline? No, thanks for a good time. I gotta go play Yakuza Like a Dragon. And by play Yakuza Like a Dragon, I mean play the basically the Animal Crossing minigame uh, in the Yakuza Like the Dragon. And that's it. Okay. Uh, right, so let me do the actual spiel. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This has been a really good time. Honestly, I had a day at work and spending time with you, Omar, and with people in the chat. You really made my day, and I really appreciate that. I hope you like this video. Comment down below if you're catching us later. Tell us what you thought about uh, Longbow Hunters by Grell. And uh, always, you can drop in some suggestions for future reads that we can put in together. I'm always looking for suggestions. Uh, smash that like button. Thanks for those. I hope you subscribe for future videos. And you can always join our Patreon to vote for our Old Reader New Reader Pick of the Month. That's it? That's it. Oh, yeah. I'm supposed to end the video. Yeah, Thank you guys so this much. Is, this is your baby. <laughs> this See is your baby. See you next week. Bye. I'm not getting my hands in there. All right.